we have just seen a ton of points in Cardiff as France win in Wales. And I've got Elko here with me, everybody's favourite pundit, to chat it through. How you doing, mate? Hey, TT. Yeah, really good. What a game. Um, they finished off what has been a brilliant Six Nations weekend in style. It has been a brilliant Six Nations weekend. And there was there was a ton of drama in this. There, you know, there was lots of faults as well, particularly defensively, I'd say, from, from France in the first half and maybe Wales in the second. But it was really enthralling game. I, I loved it. Oh, it, was, it, it was brilliant. It was um, two very different different um, teams of different sizes and capability and experience levels. And it was, it was, you know, it was, it was tight for, for a long, long time. Um, and yeah, loads, loads of errors and, and put some great stuff in there as well. And I think we can safely say Ramos is an attacking by half. <laughs> you didn't fancy tackling much today. That's for sure. Um, but, but Wales were, had, had plenty of success. They were doing what we sort of thought they should do, which is keep the, pace of the game fast, keep the ball moving, keep the ball on the pitch. And when they moved the ball sort of anywhere away from the forwards, really, particularly in the first half, they were getting a ton of success. And the flip was also true. When France kept hold of the ball and kept driving tight and used their power game, they were also getting a ton of success. So it was one of these magical games where one team scored, then the other team scored, then it flipped back again. I think the first six tries were all back and forth. Yeah. Uh, so it was, you know, you you never really knew which way it was going to go for certainly for the first fifty minutes. Yeah, I mean, for for a neutral, it was fantastic to watch. Uh, I think for a, a defense coach for either of those teams, must have been absolutely fuming. Um, but yeah, it was it was end to end stuff both sides, and it it kind of we'll get to it. There was a there was a certain point in the second half where I think either a message came on to France or they finally copped on that actually there was one way to go. Um, and it was route one. Um, but, you know, fair play to Wales, I thought, in terms of um, effort, was was off the charts. And, you know, in, in the back line, we, we were worried about the fact that they were missing such two hugely experienced guys uh, in the centres. Actually, the, the, the two lads did really well, even with an early injury and, and sort of um, did well against a very formidable uh, centre partnership Um with with the new kid coming in for France, but I thought I thought in the back line, at least parity, um, you know, uh, for Wales, um, maybe even you know sh- shaded it a little bit. I thought Dyer was unbelievable in the first half, um, and um, well, I mean there was some mistakes that led to, led to some people not being where they should have been, but finished off some some opportunities. Yeah, and that Welsh effort I thought was epitomised by skipper Daf Jenkins. I thought some of his tackling, particularly in the first half, really stood out a country mile. I thought he was really physical and just the effort level through the roof from the guy. He was absolutely outstanding. Um, and uh, it takes a lot. It's easy for us kind of watching and sort of, you know, we were laughing about how big um, the two second rows were. But I mean, they're colossal, huge units. And um you could see from the first scrum that wow, well, it could have been a very long day. But actually, technically, I think Wales were quite clever and, and did well um, to kind of to hold that uh, as much as they did, um, despite being under tremendous pressure. But yeah, he was uh, the captain was outstanding, and and you know just quickly watching the the post match and and he he said exactly what I, I was thinking and what we spoke about in our in our pre game uh, preview pod was around keep the ball in play, the French will tire, and but actually, did it, fair play to France. It, it didn't happen that way. They, they, their energy levels stayed pretty, pretty good. Probably because of what they went to and relied on. Um, but you'd, I thought it was going to open up massively. But probably from the effort that the Welsh boys had to put in in the first half, those levels just weren't where they they thought they might be. Yeah, the scrum was a was a really interesting battle because France absolutely smashed the first one. Antonio got on the inside of Gareth Thomas, who got wide and then stood up. And as soon as he did that, Antonio dropped his bind and just piled on through, which is exactly what you should do. Uh, Thomas really improved after that and made sure he didn't get broken from his hooker again. And that really helped the Welsh scrum. I mean, they didn't gain parity, but they didn't get annihilated, which it looked like they might do uh, after that first one. Um, and yeah, I just think they couldn't keep the pace of the game high enough, which is why we didn't see the fatigue in the French forwards. I don't think they could get through enough phases, enough times 
to really tire them out. And, and the French pack, although tiring towards the end of the first half, were, were fine, really, in terms of lungs. Yeah, yeah. It was a bit of a catch-22 because it's all very well trying to keep the ball in play and move all the time. But when you're getting whacked behind the game line and then you're afraid to kick it off and it just kind of compounds the whole thing. So they're kind of caught between a rock and a hard place. And, you know, unfortunately, the way the game is going, I mean, it's a really interesting conversation to be had. Uh, you know, what can Wales do? I mean, they can't just magic up huge, big players. They just can't. Um, and it's it's difficult when, when the French tails go up and, and then they realise what they need to do is, it, and really kind of... It was kind of like a, when you're watching a, a heavyweight boxing and, and there's, there's a one guy bigger than the other and they're just leaning on you and... You know, it you know it doesn't it doesn't look like much, but over time it just you're it just saps you, and all of a sudden you get whacked and, and knocked out, sort of thing. Um, but yeah, it's um, interesting times ahead for Wales. I thought they were they were bloody good though today. Um, you know, despite the result. Yeah, I, th I think one of the things that brought added pressure onto themselves was they they had a period during that first half where their kicking just was just really weak. I think it was three, maybe four in a row that they just didn't get the distance or or it was it looked rushed or hurried or whatever. And that just brought the pressure back on them. If they need to, they're going to keep France off them. They needed to be much more accurate with that kind of stuff. Um, from the kickoffs, a little thing that amused me quite a lot was they kicked to Miafu quite a lot in the first half. And it was Dyer who had to go and run up and tackle him. And fair play to him. He managed it both times. You know, I think he got there just as Murphy was catching it. So he didn't have time to like swat him away, which was, you know, the likely option if he had time. But that was a, an interesting tactic. I yeah. Think. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you know, we hope, I guess they're trying to use their gas man to get there. The kick, you're right. I, I didn't think they kicked particularly well and maybe a bit more airtime um, would have helped Dyer there. But yeah, you wouldn't want to be, it's not a great job to have, is it, tackling that mute? <laughs> no, no, not really. Um, <laughs> Tactically, France <clears throat> in their attack. I just, you don't, I don't think we've seen this at top level rugby for quite some time. France were just same way, same way, same way, same way, and all the way to the touchline uh, on several occasions. You know, we're getting used to teams really wanting to play, have two options uh, of sides to go to in attack, and that being a real strength. Whereas France went, like I say, very old school with this and it paid dividends. The uh, Fiku try, they got all the way to the left touch line and then came four or five phases back all the way to the right for Fiku to score in the corner. And I guess if you've got enough power, if you could, you know, your big men can suck enough people in uh, to those rock situation and the ball is fast enough, it's still a very valid tactic. Oh yeah, 100%. And it, it, you know, what do we call it, Isha uh, Black, I think, um, or Wave, I can't remember. But yeah, you just, just go the same way. I think it, it's it, 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 it goes two ways. For, for you as the team with the ball and possession, it's quite easy uh, to know what your job and you just, you're just rapping all the time. And um, with, um, is it Lagaric, the, the scrum half who was excellent today, mm -hmm. um, or, or whoever's playing nine, they can then you know look to snipe and things like that. But also on the defensive point of view, it kind of starts to to program uh, a team into thinking they know what's going to happen and they start to do the same thing. And that's when little gaps can kind of happen with, I think one of the tries where they didn't get the thing to get their guard in. They just, I think it was when the scrum collapsed and they were so desperate to get around the corner that no one filled in and then there's gaps all, all over the place, but yeah, keep it simple, stupid, you know, it's um, if in doubt, when you got a massive pack, <laughs> keep going the same way, you know? Yeah, and uh, that was the Legaric try that you're talking about there where um, somebody flew around and didn't quite get in guard. Yeah. And while we're talking about Legaric, he did the most French thing possible during this game. That, f I don't know how far it was, 40-metre reverse pass into midfield without looking. It could have been an interception, generally. It, it, who knows what could have happened. But France almost scored from it with Bielberry getting up the right-hand side. It was wild, and I loved it. It was so French. It was like you, you can imagine, like in the in the in the box in the coach's box, Galtier going mm, and Edward, <laughs> what, what are you doing, you lunatic? Ugh. Yeah, it was. It was um, and it wasn't even. Like, you 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 tend to see that stuff when there's an advantage or something. You know, yeah. it was it was open play, and and you're right. I, know, I can't remember who was near, maybe Dyer, but it was it was potentially under the post if someone had intercepted that. <laughs> 
Yeah, and then to continue the wildness, Wales had a five metre line out, which they threw over the top, then went back inside, and they were on for a break until oh. Wayne dropped it on the twenty-two, like a complete uh, brain fade, really, sadly, because. You know, I'm not sure they were going to go the length and score, but wow, they were definitely out and in the clear. But what bravery to try that from there. And it was it was the right call. You know, the space was there to do it. Yeah, it, it's 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 brilliant coaching, isn't it? Because, I mean, clearly that's set play. Um, they've probably spoken about it. And it, I guess, it, again, it comes down to the, the mentality. If that if that's the first game of the of the, the whole thing, you're, you're not doing that. But if you're, a, <laughs> you're an experimental team and it's... You got nothing to lose, sort of sort of thing. You 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 go for those things, and we see a lot of it in in the Super Rugby franchise, or whatever it's called now, um, where they they tend to play a lot more open because you know there's no relegation or anything like that. So fair play to them. It was a great little move, and, and yeah, Wayne Wright just just knocked it on, and and he could have been. I don't think he would have scored in mine, but I think they they could have got very very close. Um, he might have got chased down, but I can't remember. Maybe Dyer was up behind him, but wonderful bravery there to do that. Yeah, it was. Dyer was with him and, and yeah. that would have been the pass and then it would have been the foot race. But <laughs> sadly, we never got to see it. Um, <laughs> so, excuse me, France leading at half time, 20 points to 17. But then this tete nature of the game continued early in the second half oh. when Joe Roberts dummied a three on one, which made me initially go, oh, God, but he's just about scrambled Gee, over. He had to score, didn't he? <laughs> 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 you could see the relief in his face, like, oh. <laughs> Greedy, yeah, and fair play, like we said, look, like it looked. I thought he wasn't going to be able to run off that ankle injury. Um, you know, when he hobbled up to halfway mm. following the restart, I, I thought that's got five minutes and then he's gonna have to come off, but it must have been obviously it was fine. But you know, I thought he had a really strong game actually, yeah. Both both of them I thought were really, really good to be fair. Um, yeah, I thought when well, like, you never like to see them wrapping the outside, it's the right thing to do because. You know, as soon as you take your 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 boot off, then the swelling just goes. Woof. So they, you know, you got to got to do what you got to do. He did really well to probably pop a few neurofen, no doubt. Um, but yeah, he was he was he was really good. I, and and I, we didn't mention uh, uh, Rafael was was again absolutely superb. Uh, what a what a player he is. Um, but got a knock early doors in the uh, on his knee and and. Um, he was struggling a little bit. I think they were probably right to, to take him off. I think that was around the same around the same time. Yeah, and also around about that sort of time, it yeah. just came up on the TV. At uh, 55 minutes, there'd only been five penalties in the game at that point, which I think really helped in terms of the flow and and just in terms of it being a spectacle. Um, so the name of the referees escaped me. Ah, oh, Luke Pierce. So Luke you know, Pierce. big thumbs up to him. I thought he managed the game really well and kept it flowing wherever, wherever he could. He was brilliant, yeah. And um, my wa- my wife was, was was there, kind of watching a bit, and was kind of went, "Oh, is it unusual to have a French referee refing?" I was like, "No, no, he's, he's English. Uh, fantastic that he's uh, <laughs> that he's able to do that. I think quite rightly so. Although I think uh, Jiffy was saying I, I haven't heard him speak any Welsh, which I thought was quite, <laughs> quite funny. But he was he was superb. Kept us kept it going. Um, let let try to let us flow as. He doesn't talk as much as he used to, which I quite like at the breakdown. I know you're you're you, you don't like that when they're coaching too much, um, and I think he he did that quite well. Yeah, and it, so so then this was really the key point in the game. I think this is where things changed because France then basically emptied their bench and brought on all those other really enormous humans. And I, you know, you mentioned about a message coming on to the team. I wouldn't be surprised if those French men, huge Frenchmen that came on, brought that message because then it was just pound, 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 absolute dominance from those guys carrying so hard and with, I would say, a greater level of aggression and sort of passion than they probably had earlier in the game as well. Yeah, it was huge. I think, you know, uh, France had all those scrums uh, and and penalties and they kept taking a scrum and... uh, they just didn't get any points, and then and then Wales got the the free kick or the penalty off the scrum, and then Wales clear, and then after that they went back, and those changes came on. And I think at that point it was like, no, 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 take your points if they're on, and we're just gonna go route one and go right at the centre of Wales. And and you're right, when the guys came on, it was just a different, whatever whatever flicked in it. I just think that bit where they didn't get any joy, they decided no, actually we just need to take our points when they're on. Um, and actually, we need to we need to power over um, and, and score score tries. 
um, because the guy who got this try that they had to go to TMO. Well, first of all, uh, Audrey got that was a, a, a great TMO call. Um, uh, he knocked it on, didn't he? Um, and then after, then um, the the prop that came out oh, of the Colomb. top. Colomb. Yeah, what, what another absolute beast. And you just can't, like, you literally, physically, like, you just couldn't stop him. It's just he had momentum. Obviously, the guys are back. And you just, I think uh, Barkley said on, on, on comms, you know, it, it, we don't want to talk about physics, but, you know, it <laughs> is, is the way it is. If they're that much heavier than you, then you're in trouble. Yeah, and, and actually, um, somebody that probably started this this surge was Damian Penno, who came in, I think it might have been from a scrum or a line-out, and he skittled through the uh, the Welsh midfield. And, I, you know, I'm used to seeing him sort of have his power on the outside. I've not seen yeah. him use too much like that running into people in midfield, but that set the tone, I think, for the forwards to then power on, which led to the Clom try. It's now 24-30. And it's still game on. It's still 15 minutes to go at this point. And then I think the key moment really happened then. And it's it's not to blame the individual, but, you know, that these things happen in games. Wales won a turnover. Winnett had an opportunity to run through a gap against Roman Tofanua. And he I don't know whether he didn't see it or he was there was a lot of shouts coming from outside because there are a lot of players outside. But he threw the through the big pass where I'm certain he could have taken Talfanua on and beaten him on the outside. The next rock, Talfanua charges down 24-37. And at that point, I've literally written down game over. Yeah, it was it was double bubble. I mean, um, yeah, you're right. He, he might not have seen it, but he should have seen it. Um, mm. You know, for, for the future, and we, we said this quite a few times about this developing Wales team, you know, I've every faith they're going to be, they're going to be really, really good bunch of kids uh, as they come through. And I think that will be a great learning for him in a video session to say, hang on, look at this. He was, I mean, you saw how much he was blowing. And then when he scored the try after sprinting, what, 10 metres, he was absolutely blowing, needed oxygen almost. So, so if he had just looked up, and I think it was a, was it a six on three or six on four, something like that. Yeah. But even if it was that, like, he he, he, he should have, well, the, the one thing he shouldn't have done was the big loop pass to then miss out all the players because then, you know, your your overlap is gone. But, you know, he should have just taken them on. He would have got them on the outside mm-hmm. arc. And he was he was gone. I mean, he was very good today. Again, I like him. He's he's really good. But you know, look, he'll 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 learn from that. And he, he, that's just a confidence thing. That's just a, you know, he's still new on the block. And when he gets that confidence to go, that's when the Welsh boys are really dangerous because they just back their skills. And that that will come. And he will he'll he'll take those chances the next time round. Yeah, like we've said many times, we're a big fan of him. We think he's an amazing player. The coaching point I'd like to know, and I haven't watched it back, so I don't know, is whether he scanned before he got the ball. Like whether he looked up and saw he was opposite him before he caught the ball. Because if he hadn't done that, then that's probably the key thing. Like you have to know who's in front of you, who's beside you, all these kind of things. And I don't know whether he did or not. I sense he probably didn't, because if he'd seen that, I'm certain he'd have gone for it. He's been brave in all the games so far, and I don't see any reason why he wouldn't have done that today. Yeah, I, th- I think it's a fair point. I think I think if he had a scene, I mean, he probably just saw a huge blue thing. <laughs> I thought it was three players, and <laughs> it was, um, but yeah, you know, <laughs> will he, he'll 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 learn from it because I, I guarantee he was he was gone. He at least would have got up to the other end of the pitch. Maybe would have gone the whole length sort of thing. So, but say Levy, yeah. Right. And, and it was basically the end of the game. Wales tried desperately to move the ball from within their own 22, basically. Constantly trying, but just they got weaker and weaker and weaker on attack as, as things went on. France got the ball back, eventually get um, Luku over in the corner after a great yeah. offload, actually, from Penno. He did really well to get that ball free, I thought. Yeah, I like, I like the way... He, I think France are, are, can be, at times, just so... So clever. If you look at the if you look at the freeze frame, at like at, at, of that try, for someone had taken a picture, and you look at all the players that swarmed to Pino, they all just went on to him, and he knew that, and he just put it back inside, and it's just using what they kind of know the opposition are going to do. He's 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 actually a very, which is very un French wing like. He's very unselfish. He's or certainly today he was 
the amount of times he, you know, he, unless he's been told, do not run into touch, but, you know, he kept breaking down that right-hand side and then passing, okay, a few times it was a bit loose, whatever, but he never went, I, I can't remember him getting tackled into touch and wasting it. Every time he made a break, he somehow pulled it back inside. He, and he was, um, although he didn't score today, much to my annoyance, <laughs> um, uh, he, um, he, was, he was really good again, really good. Yeah, I mean, I think all the Welsh players honeypotted there because he was really favourite to score, I think. And it was a brilliant tackle by, I think it was Mackenzie Martin that yeah. stopped him. And it looked so unlikely. I really thought he was going to score as well. So to then have that presence of mind, to he probably thought he was going to score. To then go, oh, he's definitely got me. There's the offload. I thought it was really class play. Yeah, yeah, it was. And I, lo- I loved Luku's... Um... Not celebration, but reaction. Uh, obviously, the guys had a lot of pressure on him, and, and it, meant, it meant a hell of a lot for him to score that. I thought, I thought, thought it was quite nice. Um, he'll, he'll have a tough time getting back into the, into the team mind with um, how well um, the, the, the Gareth, like Gareth played, getting getting player of the match um, this afternoon. Yeah. Now then, after the game, I'm not sure if you saw the Gregory Aldrich, um interview, but he uh, here's a direct quote from Gregory Aldrich. We have a massive, massive pack. <laughs> I was like, "Yes, you do." <laughs> yeah, yeah, you, you, you really do. <laughs> yeah, and I, I think sometimes you know the game gets overcomplicated, doesn't it? Um, sometimes you've just got to use, use, use what you use what you got. South Africans are great at that. Um, always have been, um, and and. You know they're lucky the roof was closed and it wasn't wet because I think that could have been even, even worse. Um, you know it's it's so difficult, particularly in scrum time when when it's such a big. We played against big teams where it's wet and, and they they win the hit and you just there's nothing you can you can do sort of thing. But he's right, they do have a big big pack. <laughs> now there's quite a few other things around the game that I really enjoyed as well. Max Boyce singing beforehand. Did you did you hear Max? I <laughs> I turned. I turned it off. I couldn't. I couldn't hack it. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Anyway, that was great. And then about six <laughs> minutes in, the crowd was singing "Living on a Prayer." I'm not sure if you caught that. <laughs> I, did, I did hear that. Yeah, there was some crazy <laughs> stuff going on. I've got to say, the, the the French, the traveling support was obscene. It was just. I would have loved to in that one because um, they always do that second half. Uh, Marseille's to me, and it was just so loud, but. And I, well, I can imagine a lot, a lot of Welsh people. I mean, it was me. I'd be humming along. I don't know the words, but I'd be kind of. It got louder and louder and louder. They were they were tremendous. Yeah, I mean, actually, I, there was a little phase. I think there was a break in play, and the French crowd were going wild, and and they looked like the Argentina fans, you know, doing the bouncing up and down and singing. Yeah. And I was just like, that's you know, I don't know whether I haven't seen French fans do that before, so I'm not sure if they were uh, like inspired by the Argentina. It is a- it is no, it is a song that they've done before. I'm sure it worked, but I think they might be copying because you've you've been that seen the RGs live and stuff. It, and it's kind of da 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 da, and they're all just it's so good. It's just yeah. really really good crack, you know. Yeah. Okay, mate. Uh, as we wind this one up, is there anything else? Any other thoughts you had? Any other people you want to pick out or anything like that? Uh, no, not really. Um, I think we've covered off everything. I think that, that, that I wanted to sort of. Uh, cover off one of the things was was sort of uh, what we thought would transpire wouldn't transpire um, again uh, that we thought given what a big huge pack they are a big big pack um, that they would tire and fair play whatever whatever the timing of the substitutions or the difference in in, in how they play they, they managed to save that off but I think a really Despite the result, if I was a Welsh fan tonight, I'd be a little bit frustrated at the at the size of the gap. Um, but I think you know, just stick with them because I think it's gonna, I think it's gonna come good. I think next year they're gonna be, you know, this is all gonna get logged, and they'll probably discover a few new kids coming through. Um, and um, yeah, I think I think they'll be be a, a force to to be reckoned with again fairly soon. Yeah, completely agree. It's all lined up now for a cracking weekend next weekend, the final weekend. I think there's a few teams that can still win the championship. Is it four? I think four teams can still win it in theory. Yeah, um, yeah super, super Saturday. It's um there's because ma- there's massive massive pressure with with Ireland because of the way the fixtures go. So if, if so, that, so I think just yeah, there's four that can still um still are in a chance. But what's good for or bad for Ireland? 
and well, no, for Ireland because if if Scotland win and a bonus point, then I think they're they're okay. Um, if if Ireland win but without a bonus, well, I think because France and England are playing after, both of those teams will know what they need to do if Ireland drop drop the ball. Interestingly, so Ireland really need to to you know put put what happened yesterday behind them and, and show up and put in a performance to take that um, advantage uh, for those two teams. But be great if there's kind of, if it's really tight and there's maybe another draw in, and <laughs> particularly if Ireland draw with Scotland and then it's all, we love a Super Saturday. Yeah, Ireland just need to win. That's all they'll be focusing on. I'm absolutely certain. Okay, people at home, that's what we think. A really enjoyable game. Lots to, lots to love about this one. But what do you think? Any players you want to pick out that we've missed that you thought had really important contributions. Love to hear from you in the comments down below. And we'll join you there for a friendly conversation. Give this video a thumbs up while you're down there. If you don't mind, it helps other people find it. And it leaves me to say, Elko, thank you so much again for your day, your time. Thanks, CT. Pleasure. Um, I'll see you very soon. Absolutely. And for people at home, you can subscribe there. <laughs> you can watch that one next. And don't forget to get out and play.